Welcome to the Academy, a series focused on the basics of Star Wars The Old Republic. The Pirate Incursion event, better known as the Dantooine event, is a limited time event in Star Wars The Old Republic. The event happens sporadically and lasts for about a week on the normally peaceful planet of Dantooine. The event focuses on the Nova Blade Pirates' hostile takeover of the area, as they are spurred on by Imperial forces looking to disrupt the bastion created there by the Republic. In return for helping either side, you can earn some unique rewards including an Ugnaught Companion and farm-themed Stronghold decorations. You can participate in the event as early as level 20. While this event lacks the style and cool factor of some of the other events, it has some challenging heroics, there's a lot of fun exploration achievements to earn, and the Imperial side of the event has the cutest quest that exists in the entire game. To start the Pirate Incursion event, look for the large floating terminal on the Republic or Imperial fleet. If you use your fleet pass ability to get to the fleet, it will be located just down the stairs from where you load in. If you're on a low-level character, it will be a very, very short cutscene with a news anchor announcement, but if you're on a high-level character who's completed the Osis storyline, the news broadcast will change with a brief story update that's different on each faction. The Dantooine event missions are quite straightforward. You get a weekly mission automatically if you do the very short introductory quests on the fleet, or you can pick up the weekly on the mission board on Dantooine. There's also a daily quest completion mission to pick up on the missions board, a series of normal daily quests, and three heroic quests from nearby quest givers on Dantooine. The weekly wants you to complete 10 daily missions and 5 heroic quests, which is 2 days worth of questing. And the daily quests wants you to complete 6 daily missions, which is exactly how many daily missions are offered. There are different daily quests offered Republic and Imperial side, so if you're looking to experience all the content the event has to offer, you'll want to play on both factions. The daily quests are pretty easy. Just follow the quest instructions and markers on the map, and keep an eye on your quest log on the top right to see if there's any mission items you need to use. The heroic missions for Dantooine are quite difficult, and are even harder than the normal heroic quests available in the game, and it's highly recommended to bring a friend. From my testing, you should be able to do all the heroics without too much trouble with at least two high-level characters. And a skilled, well-geared player could solo all of them with some practice. There are some mechanics for each of the three fights which are fun to figure out by yourself or with a group, but if you need help, check the description of this video for a link to a full guide for the heroics. Each of the heroics has a quick travel button available near your quest list so you don't have to run there. If you decide to solo them and are having trouble, make sure to gear up, use a highly influenced companion, Use Heroic Moment, Unity, a high level med pack, a critical adrenal, and the med pack scattered around the room if you're having trouble, plus look up the tactics in the link in the description. Reputation is a way of gaining favor with different groups by completing quests for them. For example, Dantooine quests give you Dantooine reputation. As you level up your reputation rank, more rewards for that reputation track become available. By using multiple characters, you won't be limited by how many Dantooine quests you can run or to how many Dantooine Surveyor's Notes, the currency for the event you earn, but you will still be gated by how many reputation points you can earn. You can only earn a hard limit of about 17,500 Dantooine reputation in a week. This time gating mechanism means you'll only be able to earn up to the friend rank the first week you run the event. You'll reach that cap by completing the weekly on two characters if you're a subscriber over the course of two days, or double that if you're preferred or free to play. If you earn over 17,500 reputation points in a week, which you will if you do the weekly on two characters, then keep doing reputation quests and completing Dantooine dailies. Instead of getting more reputation points, you'll get reputation items which can be consumed from your inventory in future weeks, so if you get any of these, just hold on to them until the weekly timer resets. The Dantooine event reward vendor seems to stick around even after the event, so you'll be able to spend your Dantooine Surveyor's Notes currency even after the event ends. You can see your reputation by pressing Y on your keyboard, or hover over the symbol of a person on the menu. You can hover over the Dantooine Preservation Force or the Dantooine Initiative Imperial side name on the list to see how close you are to the next rank, and how many reputation points you have left remaining that you can earn during this week. You get green reputation items from the dailies, blue reputation items from the heroics, and a purple reputation item from the weekly which is worth a ridiculous amount of points compared to the green and blue ones. 
If you're trying to get to legend rank, you'll need a total of 72,500 reputation points, which, if you max out your reputation every time the event came out, would take you about 5 weeks worth of running the event. In a full run of daily missions, including the heroics, you would earn 7 Dantooine Surveyor's Notes, which are the currency for the event. The weekly also grants you a bonus of 2 extra Surveyor's Notes. Just keep in mind, the normal daily quests do not offer any of the currency, the heroics, the daily completion, and the weekly quests do give you Surveyor's Notes. If you did the Dantooine event every day for the entire week, you could earn a total of 51 Surveyor's Notes per character, and it would take you about 56 days or 8 week long daily Dantooine events worth of runs to earn 395 Dantooine Surveyor's Notes, which would get you one of every reward. I recommend instead take a look at the rewards, see which ones you like, and work towards those instead of trying to get one of each. The most notable rewards for this event include an Ugnaught Companion, which is only at the Legend ranked for 50 Dantooine Surveyor's Notes. There's two really cool mounts. They are both at the Champion level rank. There's the Nova Blade Walker that costs 50 Dantooine Surveyor's Notes. And the Steadfast Cathound mount, which costs 40 Dantooine Surveyor's Notes. There's a pet, he's really ugly, there's two sets of armors, one is unique but very plain, the other is a reskin. And the rest of the rewards are all decorations mostly related to either Dantooine or to farming like plows and crops and stuff like that. One of the coolest rewards that I think the entire event offers is a large Dantooine tree, those bilba trees you see out in the open fields, and it only requires friend rank and eight Dantooine surveyor's notes, and it's huge. It hits, fits in one of those large centerpiece hooks in your stronghold. It's just a giant tree and looks really cool. And here's where this event really shines. Apart from the normal quests and the rewards those quests offer, there's also a ton of fun achievements related to the Dantooine event, many of which are secret, they don't even show up on the achievement list. Most are for fun, while others offer rewards like decorations. So the first and the most interesting is the Golden Dream. To get this achievement, you need to complete the Heroic 4 Reactor Ransom quest 10 times by buying the 15 million credit item for a total of 150 million credits. In short, you can complete this heroic either by running the mission properly or by paying a ton of credits to bribe the quest giver. If you do that 10 times, you'll get a reward of an item called Yarvox Gratitude from the Reputation Mender that will turn your character yellow and have credit symbols floating out of your body. It's literally just for fun, the item itself doesn't do anything useful. Next up is the Lingering Shadows achievement, which is a really simple achievement that ties into the lore of the planet. So use your macro binoculars to scan the unreachable Jedi Temple ruins located off the map over the cliff to the very southeast of the Dantooine map. A lot of these achievements that we're about to get into are located at specific locations or have hidden areas or hidden items on the ground. If you want to know the specific locations for these more difficult ones coming up, please check the link to the description of this video as I have exact screenshots and exact map locations for each of them that won't be in this video. Next up is the Dantooine Treasure Hunter achievement. This treasure hunt achievement can be started by finding the extremely hidden D. Cephy's Note blue glowing datapad that's hidden deeply in the grass around the two medium-sized bilba trees growing near the collapsed well, which is near a set of buildings just north of the center of the map. This datapad is barely visible and I have no idea how someone ever found this originally. Once found, the notes go into your mission items and you can hover your mouse over the notes for a clue towards where the next note is located. There's no treasure at the end, just an achievement. If you enjoy hunting for hidden objects, the Dantooine Culinarian achievement will send you all over the map. The major downside of this achievement is that except for the first item, these culinary treats spawn randomly around the map. If you manage to find them all, you'll be rewarded with a tall fruit plant. I've actually done this achievement on my main account, but when trying to track them down for the second time, I was having a really impossible time of trying to find some of those randomly generated culinary items. Next up is the Dantooine Cipher. Find the five blue glowing cipher books. Four of these books are sneakily hidden in buildings in the open area of Dantooine, and the fifth is hidden near the remains of its writer, who met an unfortunate fate you'll discover through one of the other achievements. 
Next up is the Scholar of Dantooine, which sounds simple at first. All you have to do is find all the hidden codex entries on Dantooine. While most of these codex entries will be unlocked naturally as you explore the planet, there are three that are specifically hidden as blue glowing objects around the planet, and if you need maps, once again, check the link in the description of this video. Next up is the Poly Exclusion Principle, which is a very fun one. Um, I won't spoil exactly what happens, but go to the small island in the southeast section of the Dantooine map and hang out with Polly and its laser for a while and see what happens. Next up is, well, that was unexpected. As the name implies, find the old stone well and do whatever feels natural. You'll get the collapsed Dantooine well stronghold decoration as a reward. Next up is Farm Planet Prodigy. This achievement is awarded for doing a bunch of other achievements and it's one I just got recently. For your efforts, you'll get a Farm Plow Stronghold decoration. So the five that you need to do for the Farm Planet Prodigy one is defeat 250 weaker standard Nova Blade pirates on Dantooine, find all the codexes, scan the ruined Jedi Enclave, find the hidden fruits for the Culinarian achievement, and complete the Reactor Ransom mission without paying the ransom. And last up for the event achievements for cool ones, there's the Dantooine Heroic Effort Achievement, which requires that you complete 60 heroic missions on Dantooine. There's three missions, so you'd need to run the full set of heroics 20 times total. This is one I'm currently chasing after. You'll get a small version of the Bilba Tree decoration called Dantooine Tree Medium. Lastly, there's another hidden objective achievement, but it's only available when the Dantooine event is not active. It's called While You're Out There, and it's another treasure hunting quest that starts in a little hut in the center of the map. While they aren't achievements, there are two daily quests on both factions that you can only pick up on Dantooine when the pirate incursion event is not active. These quests don't offer any special rewards or achievements apart from credits and XP, but completionists will want to try them all out at least once. The additional achievements involve defeating additional enemies, doing many daily and weekly and heroic missions, and defeating other players in the PvP instances. And that's everything you need to know about the Dantooine event, a limited time event in Star Wars The Old Republic. I hope that was useful and helped explain how the reputation works, a little bit about the heroics, and all of the crazy stuff that you could find when exploring on Dantooine. If you want to show your support for this series, or to have similar Star Wars The Old Republic videos show up on your YouTube homepage, subscribe to this channel. And as always, may the Cath Hounds be with you.